Hey there, if you are a course creator or you're planning out your first course, you might be asking yourself the question, where should I host my videos? Or in other words, how do I let all these people who buy my course watch them? And also how do I keep it secure in the process? In this video, I wanna give you six alternatives, six different options for video hosting on the cheap that you can use today. And I'll give you my personal opinion of each one. I'll show you how they look. And by the end of this video, my goal for you is to have a good lay of the land so you can make the right decision. And I'll also give you some personal guidance along the way, having launched dozens of courses with my wife and use a ton of different services along the way. All right, so on this cheat sheet, there's a ton of information. We'll cover some of the bits and bobs that are important. But what I think will be most important here or most intuitive is let's go ahead and go through a course. And I've created a lesson inside of Thrivecart Learn, which is an awesome course platform. By the way, there's a link for that down below if you want to launch your course and save a ton of money in the process. But in this course here, this is an example course, I put together several lessons and each lesson uses a different video host. So you can see what the end user would experience. And obviously that's going to give you a huge advantage on knowing which one's right for you. All right. So the first one on the list here is YouTube. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of this option, but we'll go ahead and take a look at it here. When you play the YouTube video, you can clearly see it's a YouTube video. So if I pause the video, I can see that I like to listen to deep focus music when I'm working, or sometimes I watch some Fox News. So it obviously shows up your um, related videos. It is a YouTube platform. Its whole goal is to get you to stay on YouTube. So if you choose to use this, um, for one, it's free. That's the benefit, right? But whenever you pause, you can share the video. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause right here because sharing videos and video privacy is a huge concern for a lot of course creators. It was for us as well when we first got started, but here is the truth where there's a will, there's a way when it comes to selling digital products online, if people want to be jerks, they will be jerks. And you can try to spend all your energy, all your time and all your effort, um, to prevent that possibility. But truth be told, if they want to be bad people, they will be bad people. Okay. So try not to lose too much sleep over it. There are ways of enhancing your course offering outside of just the videos themselves. However, um, I do, when I'm looking at the solution for video hosting, I know that there's going to be some people that will steal it, but I still want to make it not so easy, right? Like anybody can put a screen recorder on and record a video. Um, but you don't want to make it as easy as YouTube does here, where you can click the share button, grab the link and, you know, do with it, whatever they would like to. Right. So that is a, a note. And the reason why I bring that up now is that privacy is going to be a big component of each one of these hosting options as we proceed through the video. All right. So that is the video or the YouTube option. Things I like about it. It does have uh, uh, closed captions. So without you even having to do anything. It'll create closed captions here on the video for you. And also because it is YouTube, you have nice little settings here, like playback speed going faster or slower. So there are some great features of this, but because of that shareability and the amount of distraction that happens during the course taking process, not my best recommendation. All right, let's continue to the next one. The next one here, actually, I was just talking to a buddy and he recorded his course using Loom. So I was like, huh, didn't know Loom had video hosting like that. Let me check it out. So I'm on a free trial here. And this is a Loom video that I recorded just for this video. Notice the shirt. So if I click on this, it'll play the video very nicely. And a lot of folks are familiar with Loom as a service, especially through all this virtual learning of just sharing quick videos like that. What you might not know is Loom also does have some very basic video editing where you can like trim out a portion of the video. I don't think it's really designed for full fledged video editing, but some of these options on this list are, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but it can be helpful just to make sure that you're getting all poised and ready before you deliver the content. You can just trim out that beginning or trim out that end, and it can be helpful. All right. So Loom is a decent option here. Your students can give you reactions at certain timestamps. Again, I don't, I don't know if I would recommend this from a course perspective, um, but some cool little features here, including the ability for you to annotate on the screen as you're recording. Now, a note on that. A lot of these options have video capture as well as video hosting video capture being like what I'm doing right now. I'm capturing a portion of my screen. I'm recording this video for you and I'm going to be using this on YouTube later on for y'all. Right. Um, I'm actually using Descript for this process. I'll talk about Descript in the next one. Uh, but point being is that Loom, I would say is much primarily 
a video capture program versus a video hosting platform. Uh, they're very strong on capturing the content, but I don't really recommend hosting it here for a lot of the same reasons. I can just click the share button and I can copy it, embed it. Just little things I probably would not recommend for a premium course that you're planning on selling. If it's just a free course, sure, any of these options is totally fine. Um, good player controls and all that, but I'm going to go ahead and say no on this one personally because that's a little bit too easy for me. All right, next, Descript. I'm in love with Descript. Like this is, I recommend this tool for everybody. But again, this the video is about video hosting specifically. So Descript is a fantastic platform when it comes to video editing, actually creating the video and editing the video and getting it ready to publish. So let me give you a quick idea of how that looks. So I pulled up the capture project inside of Descript. I uploaded a Zoom recording I had with a friend of mine for a podcast episode. And you can see here that it gives you the entire transcript plus a full-fledged video editor. It's fantastic. If you are not uber polished and if you need some help with filler words like ums and ahs and things like that, or if you just want to make the process of editing your video as easy as editing a Word document, you can literally come in here with Descript and copy or select it, delete it, and it actually does all the video editing too. The snip, snap, all that stuff inside your timeline takes care of like a Word document. Love it for that. But the question is, how is it at video hosting? Let's take a look at that guy. So here we are on this lesson for Descript video hosting, and I've got my video pulled up here. So kind of cool thing. You can, of, of course, adjust the sizing of all of the video and all that, but I just want to show you what comes out here. I can watch the video, and similarly, I can actually search the transcript. So big benefit here on, on um, Descript, if I know that it's a long video, maybe it's an hour-long lesson of your course, I can search for the word channel. And it'll search through the transcript of that video for what I'm looking for. I, I can click right here and check out what happened. It just moved the video to the place where I said that word. That's huge. Really big fan there. But now where does it fall apart or does it fall apart? Similarly, it has this share button where I can click it and it'll take me here and I can get access to, that's a really, not a very flattering picture of myself there, uh, but you can get access to the, the video and be able to share it. Big downer, not a huge fan. Uh, that's not my preferred option right there. So Descript, it's a tool that I highly recommend be in anybody's toolbox. The video capture, the video editing experience to me is unparalleled and I've tried dozens of them. Uh, but when it comes to hosting, I'm not a huge fan of this button here where you can share it. Let's go on to the next one. This is called dub. I personally use this for a good number of my videos. We'll show you why here. So dub allows you to embed video players. You can't quickly share it. It is kind of here. You don't, it, it fixes the big problem that we've seen in the previous three, where it does a good job at video protection. People really have to go out of their way to find how to get that video if they ever wanted to. Okay. So if privacy is a huge, a paramount concern of yours, this is one to take a look at. Another couple of things I like about dub is they're definitely not a, um, video editing platform primarily. They're more a video hosting. So they have some trimming ability. You can come into some videos here and come to edit and come down and try to trim but it's not the best. I would recommend use something like a Descript, use iMovie, something like that to edit your video, and then you just upload the file here. All right, so what do I like about it as well? Captions. So here you can see I've got captions on, captions off. What's beautiful about this is you can simply click a button over here and automatically add the captions. So you pay for it. I think it's three cents per minute. Let's go over here on the pricing table I've provided for you. Yeah, three cents per minute of transcription. So if you have an hour long course, let's do a little math here. It's gonna cost you a dollar and 80 cents to transcribe a one hour course or an hour's worth of content. I'm gonna pay for that. Like that's okay, that's not a bad price right there. And we do have some of our students who have asked for more ADA, um, you know, accessible video content. This is a very easy way to achieve it while maintaining that video privacy, right? 
Uh, you could also upload your own transcripts. So you could, for example, edit all your videos in uh, Descript or any other tool and then upload that transcript to the video in Dub and be good to go there. Okay, next on the list, let's talk about Vimeo. Vimeo is a very classic video hosting platform. Uh, it is kind of like the industry standard outside of YouTube for video hosting, especially for online courses. A lot of things to like about it. You can customize the, the player, which you can you can in most of these options. Um, it's been around for a while. It's trusted. The pricing, I would say, is relatively fair. And, um, you know, I don't know what else to say about it. It has, it has good privacy control options as well. A couple of things I'm not a big fan of when it comes to Vimeo is while the, the pricing is, is good, like it's right in line with some of these others, uh, it's not so much there for video editing. They have something called Vimeo Create, which is like an iPhone app. Personally, I wasn't a big fan of it. You, you, your mileage may vary, but I don't like how they handle uploads and like their storage capacity. Let me break this down for you. I don't expect you as online course creators to be consistently producing the same amount of content every week, week in and week out. I expect you to do kind of what we do. It's like, hey, this week is course mode. We're going to go and crank out content. We're going to sit down. We're going to put this thing out there. We're going to upload it to our host and we're going to go and update a course. Um, Vimeo is not set up that way or it's not really nice for people who work that way because they put not only a limit of how many videos you can have on for the year, but also by week, you can only upload a certain amount, five gigabytes per week. And if you want to have high quality, like a 4K video, five gigs could be two videos, maybe. It could be maybe 10 to 20 minutes of, of video content could fill up your full five gigs. So not a big fan of that. So while their pricing is fair, that cap really messes with it. So I'm not a huge fan of Vimeo personally, but that is a very standard option that a lot of people recommend. I've also noticed a lot of people on Facebook saying that their corporations are actually blocking any videos from Vimeo.com. I don't know why. I don't know the backstory of any of that, but I heard enough of that where I felt like I should mention it here. All right. Last one on the list here is bunny.net. Now this is one that I have not spoken about much. Uh, this video host here is kind of a totally different animal. So we'll talk about it a little bit. There's some things to really love about it and some things to be aware of. So I can adjust my quality here. I can go to HD. I can do my speed controls. Everything is great. It also has really good privacy. I tried to get to the root of this video as like not the creator of the video, but I, I tried to hack it and pirate it and do all the things I uh, know how to do just as a techie guy. And I could not really get into this video file. So I would say so far across all of these, this has the most interesting um, privacy and like security setup. This one also has the most interesting pricing setup. So uh, for bunny.net, they don't charge you a price per month or anything like that. They actually charge you by the gigabyte. Hmm. Let that sink in for a second. It, what this means is it's a, it's a pay as you go. It's you basically fill up your wallet and you have more space, more stuff. So it's interesting. If you're getting started, you're likely going to pay way less on bunny.net than any of the other options, but it comes with a little bit of a caveat is it is a less intuitive platform. This is the back end of bunny.net. And this is, it's going to show you things like bandwidth use request serve, like kind of techie jargon, um, because this is technically a content delivery network. It's not just a video hosting platform. I'm getting too techie here. Let me break it down. Basically. You can load anything up to this thing and you can load a website up to it. If you wanted to, please don't, um, you can load video, uh, videos, photos, PDFs for downloads. So any type of hosting can be handled here, which is a benefit, but they also have this built-in streamer here. So I can upload videos to specific projects and things like that. And then each one of these can have its own embed code where you can capture it and put it wherever you want to. And it does a good job of privacy and protection. So. That gigabyte pricing, the way it works is you, let's say for simplicity, it's a one gigabyte video on the nose. So the way that works is when you upload that video to Bunny to like store it, that's a one-time upload, you're going to pay a penny. When somebody downloads it for the first time, watches the whole thing, you're going to pay a penny because it's, it's the actual bandwidth. It's the upload, download, all that stuff, the transmission, which is actually where the cost is incurred by the service. And they're just tell, uh, giving you a price for their price. So it, it's a very smart business model. Um, it's a little bit nebulous to kind of get, wrap your head around, 
because you could say, hey, for a hundred uh, gigabyte course or for an hour long course, how much am I going to pay? It also depends on how you watch it. Point being, it's going to take you a lot of content consumed on Bunny to overtake something like an $8 per month or $7 per month service. All right. So it's really good on the affordability, but it's also just keep in mind, it is not a video editing tool or video capture tool. So you just do whatever your work you need to do outside and they upload it in uh, to Bunny that you can edit or even you can embed it however you'd like. All right. A lot of content there. Let me just kind of go through a couple of the nuggets. Like my big takeaways is YouTube, Loom, and Descript. For me, those are too easy. Uh, they can promote distraction and they can promote people just ca copying the links of your course and watching it whenever they want to and not keeping it inside the course area. And I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm not a huge fan of those options from a video hosting perspective, but I do think the Descript is certainly worthwhile to capture videos, do audio editing. They have something called Studio Sound, which you'll be listening to me with Studio Sound enabled. And I think it does a great job of just one click and fix as much audio stuff as it possibly can. It makes it sound great. Um, on to Dub, I think this is a great option. So let's go to the Dub pricing page real fast. So I'm currently a subscriber of their sales and marketing costs. So that's $32 per month, but you don't need all these cool features because it has you know, like playlists and this crazy CRM. And it, it's, it's a really cool platform. It does a lot of things, but for just the pure video hosting, their internal and support level, which kind of cuts out all the stuff that's not just sending videos and embedding videos, I think is totally fine. And that bills at $8 per month, which I think is totally affordable. And uh, it even gives you some of the cool reporting and stuff I never honestly look at. So Dub is a cool option. I've got no problem with that one uh, to recommend. Vimeo, personally, I would steer clear of because I don't like those caps of uploads. I think that's very, very kind of them. And then bunny.net, if you want just a video host, like it does not do capturing, like all the others pretty much do some form of video capturing and editing as well. But if you just want the cheapest option to um, host your videos, what you could do is you could use Descript to capture your content and edit your content as quickly and easily as possible, get that transcript, do all that cool stuff, and then just upload it to bunny.net. And that could save you a boatload, give you all the pr privacy options and protection options as well as include the transcript from Descript. So that would be probably the best of both worlds of, of the best video capture and editing option, as well as the cheapest hosting and reliable hosting option. But if you want like all in one simple, I think Dub is the best of these options here, the best all in one, because that's a decent screen recorder. It has acceptable video editing but it has a really good video hosting and embed player option with built-in transcripts for three pennies per minute. So that's that. I think we are all fully educated on video hosting. I hope you're still awake, still with me. If you'd like a copy of this spreadsheet just to have for future reference, there's a link down below. You can click to it and grab it. And aside from that, let me know if I messed up any of these stats in here. So for example, I'm grading each one of these across different levels. Let me know if anything I put here you disagree with. I'd love to know. I want to make sure I give the most accurate information. And obviously, this was a huge fact-finding mission to prepare for you guys. So I hope that everything is spiffy and clean. So let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to add to the conversation. And which video host are you personally using? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, of course, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for more awesome content coming your way. Take care.